Welcome back, everyone. You might have learned that Excel is really good at doing charts and graphs for you when you plug some data on the spreadsheet. But what it's also really good at is manipulating the data, doing calculations with the data, and making your life a lot easier if you want to work with numbers and have a lot of math that's easy or complicated to do. So let's take a look at this with a couple spreadsheet examples here that are going to introduce you to the idea of how Excel can do a little bit of math for you. So here we go. What I've done is I've already pre-typed two different little spreadsheets here. One is you purchasing lunch at the school store and the cost of the items. And then we'll get to the other one after. So you'll see here how I've laid out my columns. I have the price of the food. So for chips, milk, and apple and fries. Okay, and this is dollars. I have how many the person's going to buy, the amount. Then I'm going to calculate the cost. I'm going to calculate the tax and the total. I'll get the total bill. Ask the customer how much they're going to pay, calculate their change, and then do a few other things over here. So let's see how this works. This is where the user is going to start to enter stuff. So I'm going to put some fake data here. So let's say you're working the store and you say they want very healthy lunch here. Four packs of chips. They want one milk, one apple, and they want two fries. Okay. Now, when I get to the cost over here, here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to do it in my head and go... 2 times 4 is 8. The whole purpose of Excel is to make your life as easy as possible when there's math and calculations to be done. So what I'm going to do is Excel will allow me to enter an equation in here. And here's how you do it. You start off with the equal sign. You'll see here the equal sign shows up here, and it also shows up here. Right? This tells you your little equation you're doing as well. Now, when I do an equal sign here, what I want to do is I want to basically put the math equation for 2 times 4. But don't do this. Okay, The customer is not always going to be purchasing 4. So the beauty of Excel is you do this. I know the equation is 2 times 4, but what that really is, is it's B3. And you'll see when I click on it, it types it in there. The time symbol is the asterisk on your keyboard times C3. And once I hit enter, that's going to basically calculate a number for me. Now, if you wanted, you could have just typed that out. Equals B3 times C3. And little, little lower, <laughs> lowercase, uppercase, doesn't matter. You hit enter, and you get 8. If you ever want to go back and see what equation that is, one way is just click on the cell and go check the bar up here. B3 times C3, right? The formula bar. Pretty good. Now, of course, you may go here and you go, oh, okay, this one's going to be equal B4 times C4. And that does work, right? 75 cents, 1 times 75. But imagine you had like a real spreadsheet that had hundreds of things. You don't want to type the equation over. There has to be an easier way. And of course there is. You click on the cell that has your equation already typed. And if you know it's the same equation going the whole way down, then just click on this little tiny square there. That's called the handle. Click on it, drag down, let go, and voila, it is put the equations in there, but notice B5, C5, B6, B6. It's pretty smart. It's copied the equation and adjusted the numbers so that as you go down the row, the equation is going to be appropriate for that row. Now, there's ways to prevent that from happening, but for now, that's good. Okay, so we're going to keep this. So we got our cost done. Now everybody here knows that most countries charge tax when you buy something. So it's not just $8. It's $8 plus some tax. I'll give you the equation for tax here, which, uh, you know, computer business students should know. It's basically going to be this value in this square, which is D3 times. And I'm just going to make up a number here. I'm going to say it's 7% tax. If it's 7% tax, percentages, if you're not great at math, that would be 0 0.07, All right? You move the decimal over twice. So it's always a very small number, right? Point something. That's it. Hit enter, and I've got my tax, 56. Yeah, 7 times 8, 56 looks right. Always check your numbers, right? Make sure the equation you're using is actually getting you what you want. Okay, let's go for the total. Well, the total is the cost plus that little extra bit of tax. You just type this out. 
equals D3, and nice, it even highlights it as you type it, plus we add on E3. Hit enter, 8.56, looks good. Now, of course, I'm not gonna retype all those equations. I can do a drag, let go, drag, let go, and I've got myself all the cost, tax, and total for all those items. Okay, pretty easy. Now, of course, I come to the point here where I want to do the total bill. And the total bill is supposed to be all these added up. Okay, how can I do that? Now I'm going to show you something slightly different. What we're going to use is pre-built-in functions and formulas that Excel already has, common things that everybody wants to do with numbers. And one of them is going to be we need to take the sum, add these up. Okay, in math, when you add things up, it's called a sum. Now, I don't want to go F3 plus F4 plus F5 plus F6. It would work, but imagine you had 100 of them. You don't want to type 100 things out. So Excel has this. Equals the sum. And as you start typing, you'll see here Excel has a lot of functions that are pre-built. Put the bracket. And now what I want to do is I want to give it a range of cells to do the sum for. And to do the range of cells, you can actually type it in yourself or just do this. Click, drag, let go. Close the bracket off. And that's the overall goal here. I want to take the sum from F3 all the way down to F6. And you'll see here they use the colon if you wanted to type that yourself. Okay. So again, you just go equals the sum of F3 to F6, okay? Or you highlight. Whoops, the highlighting didn't do well there. There we go. So you can always highlight in there as well. And what do you know? There we go. 15 point whatever, whatever, whatever. We are going to clean up these numbers after to make them look like dollars properly written. You'll see here I have the payment. Not bad. This is where the user now would enter how much they want to pay with. I'm going to assume they pay with enough money. We're not going to complicate things. So let's say they pay with $50. That's all they got. Can you calculate the change? Of course you can. It's going to equal F8 minus F7. Hit enter. And there's your change. Now, notice one thing about Excel. This is all sort of nice and easy, and it works. Notice that when I change things like this, I want eight of those. Everything, every equation updates itself. Okay? It's smart. And that's the point of Excel, right? You do sort of a template or a general spreadsheet with all the equations in it. You can now reuse this for the rest of your life, changing the numbers and fiddling around. Okay? Very useful. Okay? And it wasn't that much work to do either. Now, when we did this, we had typed our own equation in. When we did this, we typed our own equation. When we did this, we typed our own. When we did this, we used a function, okay, a pre-built one, sum. I want to give you one or two of the other popular functions that exist there. How many items did they purchase? Well, I just want to add up these. So this would be the sum of c3 to c6 um, where did they spend their most money i'm actually going to do this one in the next video we'll actually leave that at this right now that's your little intro but that's your first equation video okay it gives you an idea how to start doing some of this stuff thanks for watching in the next video i'm going to walk you through this one here which will do a few more averages most papers delivered least papers how many people actually were delivering their papers on their paper route. Uh, we'll save that for the next one. Thanks for watching.